my name is Stephanie Sutton, editor of The Medicine Maker. Today I'm delighted to be talking with Nick Shackley from Johnson Mathey. We're going to be talking about the trends and challenges in the pharmaceutical industry. So Nick, first of all, perhaps you can tell us a bit about your role at Johnson Mathey and why the pharma industry is such an exciting place to work. No, absolutely. I'm delighted to be able to do so. So Johnson Mathey Health has, has got its business organized really in two areas, representing the different points in the life cycle of drugs. The first area is, is one that serves the originator customers, a, a classic CDMO, contract manufacturing and development organization business. And then it has a business that looks after the generics part of the life cycle of drugs. And it's that generics business that I have responsibility for, alongside for the whole of our business, the strategic marketing activity. Activities. Within the generics business, we really focus on four main segments. They are the uh, addiction segment, uh, the stimulant segment, we have a segment on diverse therapeutics, and we have a fourth segment on analgesics. We also have a portfolio as well as our existing generics business. We develop future generics and we invest around $15 million a year uh, in developing and manufacturing those products that will go generic in the future, creating that pipeline of products for future sales. Regarding the particular opportunities, uh, what drives excitement, I think, in, in this segment, certainly what excites me about the segment is, is really thinking firstly about the degree of innovation that's going on in the pharmaceutical space. That innovation may be around novel modalities, novel forms of particular drugs that can deliver a therapeutic effect, as well as just the increasing complexity, the increasing molecular complexity of uh, the drugs that are getting developed and, and supplied to meet those new needs, those unmet needs, the more specific needs of patients. And, and putting that together between those novel modalities and that complexity is really then having the right science and manufacturing capability to address those particular needs that I think is, it makes it a particularly exciting time to be operating in this space. And I think the, the as well as the science and the capability that I think is exciting, it's also knowing that we're addressing particular patient needs. Some of those needs may be specific and currently unmet when one thinks about the new drugs, but also ensuring that, that, that there's good access and affordable medicines when thinking about the generics portfolio. And what do you think are the major trends in the industry at the moment? Yeah, I think the trends actually relate a little bit to, the, to what drives the excitement in the space. Um, firstly, again, around the, the science and the specific targeted medicines and those unaddressed, unmet needs, um, that I think will be an ongoing and continuing trend. I think we're going to see more specific patient population driven medicines, uh, often to address currently unmet needs, uh, typically seeing medicines that may be more niche, smaller volumes of, of the products that get made to address particular uh, disease states in a particular a part of the population that, that, that has that disease. Um, and I think the, the other trend is going to be ensuring that we have the science and the capability to then address those particular uh, types of medicines that are driven by, by the science and the, the patient needs, both the development capability, but then the manufacturing capability to be able to scale those products. And bring those together, particularly in the generic space, where you can then ensure long term, you've got medicines that are both accessible and again, affordable, that you can build in the right cost of goods and hence enable that affordability to ensure that you can meet the widest set of population uh, that does need those particular medications. What do these trends mean for generic providers? And what do you think are the biggest challenges in the industry right now? So I think the, you know, what this means for, for the, the generics space, and, and particularly for considering the future generics, products that are going to go generic in, in the future, is really ensuring that you have the right science and manufacturing capability to be able to develop and make these newer modalities, these more complex medicines. Um, they may, as well as ensuring that to achieve the right cost of goods, you build in at an early stage as you develop 
those effective cost of goods in the, the process that you're going to man- use to manufacture those products and then build in the flexible manufacturing capability that allows you to have a core base that addresses these wide range of products that are typically smaller volume, more niche, but can do so in a cost effective manner. And I think that's all about having the right capability that can be flexible, that can be quickly adapted to the range of products that that you're going to bring through in a future generics portfolio. And I think the challenges for the industry, what that then means in terms of near-term challenges for the generics industry, I I think some of the near-term challenges are really around supply chain resilience, as we've seen in a COVID-19 epidemic scenario, existing supply chains, which were previously perceived to be robust, have become challenged. Uh, The ability to secure the raw materials, the ability to move the raw materials, the ability to to move your finished products has all, all, all had additional challenges in this environment. And I think those near-term challenges are what the industry is having to address, as well as I think being very conscious about thinking about the future and what other issues may trigger perturbations, disruptions in supply chains, and making sure that you can build resilience into your overall supply chains. And then I think the second area of challenges is really a people-related challenge. It's a talent-related challenge. We are in a very exciting industry. Talent, whether it be particularly scientific talent, uh, maybe talent associated with uh, the manufacturing of these kinds of products, it's an area where that talent, that talent pool is in very high demand. So I think one of the challenges is going to be is really about how do you successfully recruit, develop, and retain that talent. And and have and be able to operate in a scenario where inevitably there is going to be a certain turnover of that skill set and how do you adapt the ways of working within organizations to ensure that you can manage um, you, you can manage that that scenario how is johnson Matthew positioned to adapt and succeed in the changing environment for pharmaceutical manufacture so firstly on supply chain resilience we're building Uh, and have really built both short-term and mid-term plans to improve resilience. We've undertaken a process of looking at where we see risks with our overall supply chain and then determine what steps we're going to take to improve that resilience. And that we've done across our external network of suppliers as well as our overall internal manufacturing footprint. We've thought about it in terms of raw material imports. We've thought about it of the intermediate steps we manufacture, as well as the final goods we manufacture. And putting that picture together in totality, understanding what that means, identifying the areas of risk, and then building in the plan to ensure that we de-risk our supply chain. And we then have confidence going forward, whether it be the pandemic that we're experiencing or whether it be other triggers and issues that would interrupt existing supply chains, that we have a robust plan to deal with what we can potentially foresee and even those things that we may not have necessarily foreseen. So with that is in really in respect to supply chain resilience. With respect to talent, uh, a lot of work has already been done and we're building on a strong foundation of both how we recruit talent, uh, both directly from um, the universities and the colleges, and how we quickly develop that talent and drive the opportunity for, for, for those relatively, recruiting, relatively recently recruited individuals to get down their learning curve and to accelerate their development and their responsibilities. And we have a, a detailed career path for, for, for those individuals, and we're deploying that to ensure that we give them the maximum opportunity to contribute and they get the maximum opportunity to grow within Johnson Matthew. And I think those would be the key aspects of how we look to recruit, develop, and retain talent. Acknowledging that we're in a dynamic market, we're in a market where that talent is in high demand, and we will consciously plan uh, and anticipate a certain degree of turnover within that talent as a part of our overall recruit, develop, and retain uh, talent plans. I think in summary, I would say Johnson Matthew sees this area as an exciting 
uh, area, not without its challenges. And I think the opportunities that are present itself in an area where there's such a degree of innovation, such a degree of need for uh, securing accessible and affordable medicines and contributing uh, to the well-being of, of patients in need of those med medicines, I mean, it really is an exciting time, not just for myself, but for all of us here working in this particular segment. And it's it remains very exciting to be a part of, of this particular industry and be a part of Johnson Matthey servicing this industry. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for your time, Nick, and for the, for the fascinating discussion. Thank you.